What if I told you there's a Python data structure that works like a real dictionary? When you look up a word or a key, you get its definition or value. That's pretty useful when you want to organize data with meaningful labels, such as the email addresses of your best friends. This data structure is called a Python dictionary. Let's see how to create one. To create a Python dictionary, we start with curly brackets. In between those brackets, we write the dictionary entries. Let's first create an entry to store Bob's email address. Each dictionary entry has two parts, a key and a value. The key is the label we want to use to access the value. In Bob's case, the key is his name and the value is his email address. In Python, the syntax we use to connect the key and the value is a colon. Entries like this are called key-value pairs because each key is linked to a specific value. When a dictionary has multiple entries, we separate them with commas. We can then similarly create key-value pairs for our other friends. And just like that, you've created your first Python dictionary. Now, let's see how quickly we can look up Bob's email address. To do this, let's first assign our dictionary to the variable contacts. To retrieve Bob's email address from the dictionary, we follow the name of our dictionary with square brackets. Inside those brackets, we put the key we're looking for, in this case, Bob in quotes. And when we run this, we get Bob's email address, ilovebunnies at gmail.com. In other words, by using the key Bob, we can directly access the corresponding value in the dictionary. Awesome, now you know how to create dictionaries and access values using keys. But as you might know, dictionaries are not the only way we can organize collections of items in Python. For example, instead of creating a dictionary of our friends' emails, we could have created a list of emails. Would using a list be a better idea? Before we go any further, if you need to refresh your knowledge of Python lists, we've left a link in the description. Now, let's discuss why using a dictionary instead of a list is a better idea in the current example. In our example, both the list and dictionary contain the same values, our friends' emails. But the difference is how the values are identified. In a list, the items are identified, or indexed, by their position in the list. If we want to get Bob's email address, we need to remember that it is the first item in the list and index that list with zero. That's reasonable with three friends in our contact list. But if you're really popular and have dozens of friends, remembering the position of each friend's email in the list will be very hard. With a dictionary, we only need to remember our friends' names to get their emails. Here's the bottom line. Dictionaries make it more simple and intuitive to work with data that have meaningful labels. For example, they're great for organizing things like usernames and passwords, products and their prices, or students and their grades. In each case, the key serves as a clear label that helps us quickly access the related value. Awesome! At this point, you understand the differences between dictionaries and lists and know when it is better to use a dictionary. But to use dictionaries effectively in your own projects, it is important to understand what kinds of data can be used as keys and values. Let's dive into the rules and best practices for keys and values. First, the values of a dictionary can be of any data type. For example, we could create a siblings dictionary where each value is an integer showing how many siblings each friend has. Or we could create a has pet dictionary where the values are booleans, true if the friend has a pet and false if not. Notice that in the has pet dictionary, the value true appears more than once. That's totally fine. In Python, different keys can share the same value. 
However, dictionary keys must be unique. For example, let's try to add a second email address for Wendy. To do this, we'll write a second Wendy key in the dictionary definition and pair it with a second email. When we run the cell and display our updated dictionary, only one of the entries for Wendy has been added to the dictionary. If you think about it, this behavior makes sense. If our dictionary had two Wendy keys, how would Python know which email to return? Finally, the keys of a dictionary aren't limited to strings. They can be integers, floats, or even booleans. That said, strings are by far the most common choice, so that's what we'll use in the rest of this video. Great, now you understand the rules for dictionary keys and values. That's enough information to create dictionaries, but what if you want to modify an existing dictionary by adding or removing entries? For example, let's say we've made a new friend named Alex and want to add their email, coolalex at gmail.com, to our dictionary. That's easy to do. Simply write the dictionary name, followed by square brackets, with the new key Alex inside. Then, use the equal sign to assign coolalex at gmail.com as the value. That's it! The new pair has been added. Now, to remove a key value pair, we can use the pop method. For example, let's say Wendy and I had a fight and I want to remove her from my contacts. To do that, I can call the pop method on the dictionary and pass in her name as the key. Bye, Wendy! Awesome! So far, we focused on operations that only affect a single entry in the dictionary. But what if you want to iterate over the whole dictionary, all the names, all the emails, or both together? Python has a few methods that make this really easy. For example, let's say we want to check if Alex is in our contacts without having to print the entire dictionary and manually search through it. We can do this with the keys method. As you can probably guess, the keys method returns all the keys in the dictionary. Note that the keys here are wrapped inside a dictionary keys object. When we use a for loop, we can iterate over this type of object just like we would with a list. So, to see if Alex is in our contacts, we can write a for loop that iterates through the keys. During each iteration of the loop, we check to see if the key is equal to Alex and print a message if it is. Awesome! Our loop confirms that Alex is in our contacts. This works for names, but what if we only care about the email addresses themselves? For example, let's say we want to check if a certain email address, ilovebunnies at gmail.com, is in our contact list without printing the entire dictionary. We can do this with the values method. Similar to the keys method, the values method returns all the values in the dictionary. To check if ilovebunnies at gmail.com is in our contacts, we write a for loop that iterates through the values. During each iteration, we compare the value to ilovebunnies at gmail.com and print a message if it matches. Great, our loop confirms that ilovebunnies at gmail.com is an email in our contacts. But what if we need both the key and the value at the same time? For example, to figure out whose email is ilovebunnies at gmail.com. To do this, we use a for loop and the items method. The items method returns both the keys and values at the same time as tuples. Inside the loop, we can reuse our comparison logic, but update our print statement to output the key associated with the current value. Running the cell, our program tells us that Bob's email is ilovebunnies at gmail.com. Awesome! You now know how to use Python dictionaries to organize and store information in your own code. If you'd like to practice what you've learned, check out the notebook we created. It has a few exercises to get you started. 
We're working on lots more Python explainer videos like this one, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like to learn about, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.